Hi, my name is Dmitry. I'm a software engineer and a C++ and Python mentor. This is the fifth and the last video in a series that I'm making about defining strict JSON config schemas in Python using PyTensic V2. So in this video, I would like to conclude the series by showing you how we can leverage the powerful type system that we have built so far in the previous four videos. Uh, to show that, to showcase that, I would like to first introduce you to a, an issue that we can encounter if we, or when we try to continue our development of the application that we have started in this series. So here on the left, I have what we have ended up with so far um, in, in the last video. It's the VPN client implementation, the naive approach to configuring it in JSON, where we don't impose any sort of structure on the config. <coughs> and um, so this is what we had last time, exactly the same thing. And now I would like to continue the story by thinking what would happen if we were to try to actually use the method password and key um, values that we have been passed from the config. Uh, just to quickly remind ourselves, our VPN client uh, is now supporting the encryption, and there are two methods of encryption supported. One is script foo that requires a password, and the other one is script bar that requires a key. Uh, now, let me quickly switch to my second window in Tmux. So in that window, I've added a connect crypt bar function that is actually going to perform the connection according to the crypt bar method, the one that requires a key, right? So what we specify here is the destination server, that is a string, destination port, that is an integer, and the key, that is a string. And um, then we actually do some stuff related to the encryption method itself. Now, what I would like to do now is make our VPN client uh, use that connection, or sorry, use that function for connecting uh, when the method that is specified is script bar. So we're gonna be doing that in the do stuff method. Uh, and here, we just check if the method is script bar, kind of sensible. And if it is, then we will call connect crypt bar and specify it what the values we have got from the config. So the server itself, um, the port, and the key as well. So key equals self.key. Now, the problem that I would like to highlight here is something that my type checker is actually pointing out. So here it says, that the argument of type string or none cannot be assigned to parameter key of type string in a function crypt connect crypt bar. Um, that is a very legit problem because the thing is that so far, uh, nothing in our code actually verifies that the self.key is indeed a string that it claims to be. Or rather, we would like it to be a string for crypt bar to work, and crypt bar assumes that it is a string but we have never checked that. And so far the key is marked as optional because so far we have not checked whether the method is crypt foo or crypt bar and crypt foo is totally allowed to have a key that is none. So we just don't know. Um, basically, to, if we wanted to check that, there, there, there's a standard Python way to kind of check something and fail if it doesn't work. Uh, sorry, fail if it uh, doesn't hold, and that's called an assert. So we can assert that self.key is not none. That's a way that we can check the uh, fix this problem. And as you can see, now the warning that I had before is now gone because the type checker is now actually aware that by the time we get here, key is certainly not none, and that means that it has to be a string then. Um, the problem with this solution is actually there's a couple of them. So first of all, <clears throat> when we do stuff like this, what we are actually trying to represent is the implicit assumption or implicit coupling that we have between the method and the key. Uh, why am I saying that it is implicit? Well, because nothing in our code actually um, asserts that <laughs> assumption and makes it clear up until that point when we actually get to use it. So basically that means that 
to uh, you know in order to actually use it according to what it used should be used like uh, we have to check that it is not none and if you think about it every time we will have to we will try to use self.p we will have to check it that it is not none every time because this although it does apply well uh, when w in this particular if statement if I were to try to do the second thing again let's say it's just not gonna work right um, yeah so I'm gonna delete the code that I have added and yeah so that solution kind of does work uh, but it requires you to duplicate that code every time and it actually doesn't solve the underlying issue, which is that your type system doesn't reflect the actual structure of the domain that you're trying to capture. Now, let's see how the type system that we've got with Pydantic solution is going to help us resolve that issue. So let me again switch my Tmux window now to the third one. And here we have almost the same two files that we had last time. The left one is just defining the Pydantic models, as we've discussed the last time, and that hasn't changed at all. And in the middle, uh, we actually have a, an app file that has been altered slightly that uses that definitions of the models, but now it also has this connect crypt var function, and it also tries to call it. So let's have a look at how it calls it and what comes out of it. So to check if the encryption type specified is indeed crypt bar what we use is we call the is instance uh, primitive that checks that encryption um, parameter and uh, encryption uh, attribute is actually of the type crypt bar config and so that's only gonna succeed and enter the if statement if that is correct and now by now uh, we decide that we want to call the connect crypt bar function, specifying it the server, the port, and the key. And now, as you can see here, um, the, you know, our type checker doesn't complain about anything because it knows perfectly well that since this encryption uh, attribute is of the type crypt bar, we know that crypt, crypt bar has to have a key. So here on the left, we have this key. And that key is a string. It cannot be none. It's not optional. It's required. So we have no, we run no danger of actually running into a key that is not a string here. So we are safe. And that is really nice, right? So we don't have to uh, assert it every time. Anytime we know we have got a crypt bar config, we're just going to have access to the key uh, without any additional checking. But the benefits actually don't stop there. So let's imagine for a second that crib bar config received some update or something as a method, and uh, it now wants to have a password as well, and we would like to reflect that in our code base. So how would we go about it? Well, first of all, we would like to provide our users with a way to specify that password. So we add something here. Password is a string. Now. Obviously, crypt connect crypt bar functionality will also have to be updated because if it requires a password now, it will have to accept it from the uh, arguments of the function. Uh, but now the thing is that we need to actually specify that this password to the connect crypt bar function every time we would like to can call the function. And so you would normally do it like this password equals self.config.encryption.password. Um, and while, well, actually, let me just restart my NeoVim so that it rereads the definitions. So now that my NeoVim has reread the definition of the model, uh, it now doesn't complain about the password being missing. And so that um, should kind of work, right? Uh, but now we're, there's actually an improvement to that code that is only possible because we have the script bar config model on the left. So if you think about it, uh, connect crypt bar should have access to the to all of the parameters of the crypt bar connection. There are right because there's no point in having anything uh, well not having access to any of them. And so to do, uh, to reflect that, we can actually make it accept not the key and password, but the config directly or crypt bar 
bar config of the type crypt bar config. And so now we can replace this with a crypt bar config equals self dot config dot encryption. And that is actually very nice. Why? Well, now every time we're going to be adding a thing into the crypt bar config, uh, there will be no need to change anything about the way we call the connect crypt bar. The only thing that is actually changing is what the contents are of this bundle of things that is the crypt bar config. But anything that has access to that crypt bar config uh, will just have automatically have access to the new thing that you will add. So it's actually very beneficial to have your models reflect what the logical bundling of those key and password fields is in reality, so that when the reality changes, kind of, uh, it is very easy for you to change your code accordingly. Uh, so now, having said that, I would actually like to conclude the series by uh, running a little summary where we I actually reflect on what we have done in that series so far. So we started off by implementing a VPN client that is configured by JSON config in a very naive way. Then we highlighted some of the issues that come with this naive approach. And then we introduced Pydantic to actually solve those issues. Then we went ahead and explored the powerful um, discriminated union tool that Pydantic has and that allowed us to include encryption into our application in a seamless way and interact with it in a in a clear and clean manner and then we concluded by telling you and showcasing how having those strict models can help your overall uh, application structure and reduce the uh, error proneness so make it less error prone and make it easier to the reader and easier for your type checker, or the, static, the static checking of any other kind, uh, to interact with your code and understand it. Having said all of that, I would like to thank you for watching, and please leave your comments and questions below. I'll answer them. And until next time, thanks.